Hey my friends, it's Late Boy Scout back with part two of my recap video recapping my two-day shotgun course that I took down at Frontside recently. Now, if you watched all of part one, you should be up to date. If not, go back and watch part one before you watch any of this because you're going to be confused. As I said in part one, I'm going to try to keep this short. I'm going to keep the details to a minimum and in separate videos, I'm going to go over some of the, uh, the real, the detailed versions of what I'm explaining to you and uh, do some actual demonstrations out on a live fire range. Right now I'm just in my house in front of a green screen so I can't do any of that. So the first thing we got right into on day two and we really got right into it. I mean the orientation was done, the checking out your gear was done. So we got right to the range and got to work. And the first thing we did was practicing shooting from the three different ready positions that I talked to you, to you about in part one. Once again those are ready which is kind of down like this then there's high ready which is about like this where you got your bead sort of in line with your target as my eye is with your the camera lens right now and then there's field ready which is kind of holding it down like this and standing up straight and relaxed shotgun out of frame of camera sorry about that but that's basically what field ready is and we talked about how to present and fire from each of these different ready positions and we did so with live fire. Pre the previous day we did it all pretty much um, dry until towards the end I think we did a little, little bit of live fire. But today we started out live fire. We went straight into it. So we went from field ready to our firing position. We went from high ready to our firing position. We went from ready to our firing position. We did that multiple times live fire. It was a lot of fun. From that point we discussed the multiple shooting positions and I can't really show them to you adequately here on the green screen. So this is one that you're definitely going to want to subscribe for and watch for a future video on. But the three different shooting positions are effectively standing with that forward lean, then there's kneeling, it's sort of a, not a crouch but kind of a one knee kneel, and then prone, how to go prone. So not just what those positions are but how to safely get into them and how to do so effectively with your body mechanics uh, in order to get into a prone position quickly, get into a kneeling position quickly, whatever you're going to do uh, safely, effectively, and get on target quick. Now we needed to learn those different positions because we were about to use them in the very next segment which was zeroing our shotguns. Now that doesn't seem to make sense. How do you zero a shotgun? I mean it's a shotgun. Yeah, but you can also shoot slugs through it and you need to know what your zero is at 50 yards with slugs. So whatever your zero or whatever slug it is you're using, you need to know kind of how it patterns from 50 yards. So that's what we worked on. From the 50 yard line and working in pairs in two relays as I discussed before, we took uh, three sets of three shots at our 50 yard target and you know took turns, first the first relay and then second the second relay, going in between them, then going up and ch checking our targets and taping them and getting a sense for how our shots are spreading out. I think my best group was, oh, I think 8 inches, 8, 10 inches, something like that from 50 yards. So not an amazing group, but as they said, there's a lot of variance in what different slugs can do and uh, sometimes what different shotguns can do. Once we had our zero for slugs, then we learned about transitioning to slugs, going from having shot in our shotgun to putting a slug round in there to take a distance shot. This was pretty fun. I really enjoyed this part of the day. So what it basically amounts to, there's a couple different effective ways to transition to slugs. And again, this will be probably a separate video. Uh, I'll go into more detail and show you exactly how it's done on a firing range. But essentially, the probably the easiest way to transition to a slug is to, of course, grab it from whatever pouch or holder you've got, index it properly, load it into the magazine, then rack, which would eject whatever shot shell you have in the chamber, eject that out and bring that slug into the chamber ready to fire. That's probably the fastest way and that only works if you don't have a completely full magazine. So that's why they taught us another way too, which is very simply, you would rack it back, shake out whatever's in there. Now that would be one that would pull out of the chamber and one that would be lifted up on the elevator to, uh, to be brought into the chamber next. So you want to shake both of those out and that kind of sometimes takes some doing. But you shake both those out, you get a hold of your slug, you bring it into the chamber directly, 
bring your slide forward, and then you're ready to take your shot. So again, that's two ways that you can transition the slugs, and uh, yeah, pretty effective, pretty cool. Now with everything else that we learn, we go and practice it. So after we learned that, sitting down, we went to the line, first relay, second relay, and we took turns trying both, both methods. Now, they didn't recommend one over the other. I think it really was a matter of whatever your situation is, use that one. So they let us practice both. They didn't really tell us which one we had to do. They let us load up either through the magazine or by racking and rolling and ejecting those shells and then manually port loading and getting it into there. But we tried that from both standing, kneeling. Uh, we didn't go prone. We only did the prone for the actual zeroing. But either standing or kneeling, we did the uh, transition, to shot, or transition to slug drill, basically, where we would start off with two in the chamber, or sorry, two in the magazine. We would uh, rack one and put it into the chamber. Then we would have a slug ready to go. They would, uh, when they gave us the go command, we'd bring it up. We'd eject both of those, get our slug in there bring it up and fire. We did that from 35 and 50 yards and I think I hit it every single time. So that was cool. At this point we discussed multiple opponents. How to manage the recoil of your shotgun to quickly get from one target to the next target uh, without you know sending your shot wild. So that was something we worked on you know going from the ready, bringing it up, taking our shots, boom, boom, and making sure that we you know, through that recoil, we absorbed that into our body, took it backwards more than up, and then, you know, once again, backwards more than up, in order to maintain that sort of sight picture from one target to the next. Pretty important stuff. We also talked about failure to stop drills. Even in a shotgun situation, hey, maybe they're wearing body armor or something like that, but there could be a failure to stop issue where you aim your shot center of mass and yet your target doesn't go down. So what do you do? There are a couple different options. One of those options is a headshot. So you bring it up to the head instead of towards the body, hopefully neutralizing the target, hopefully neutralizing the threat. Another option is the pelvic shot. That will also take out their ability to stand and fight and uh, neutralize the threat. After that discussion, we had a live fire drill until lunchtime that went pretty long and was a lot of fun. We did pretty much everything that we had learned coming up from whatever ready we chose going up and taking shots at multiple opponents, okay, and then we would have to tactical reload as we could, you know, get some uh, shots or get some uh, rounds back into our magazine while we're in our downtime after we've done our uh, after action drill. I don't think that's something I mentioned, by the way, in regards to the after action drill in part one. You always want to have some tactical reloads going on. Reload, reload tactically. Always be feeding your shotgun, putting a few more in there when you have some downtime. But anyway, so we did that. After our multiple shots, they'd call out two, we'd fire at two, then we'd go into ready, and our after action, and then our, you know, reloading. Also, another thing, that reminds me, another after action aspect is checking the chamber, holding down your action release, pulling that slide back just enough to make sure that you still got an active shell in there. That's a good part of it. The multiple shots, the after action, the reloading, and then they would call more multiple shots, one, two, three, and they were got, this is when they really started speeding it up, really picked up the pace, and nobody could keep up. So we got to the point where everybody, by the end, and they would call out head after we thought that we were in the middle of a, you know, we're in the middle of a, 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 an after action drill and trying to reload, and they'd call out head, and we'd have to take a couple more shots, and everybody went dry. Everybody went dry. And so by the end of this drill, we were all port loading like crazy, just trying to take out whichever enemy we could. Man, it was a lot of fun. Lunch was a, a nice, well-needed rest at that point. Once again, because I was a returning front sight student, the lunch lectures were pretty much supplemental for me. So immediately after lunch, I went back to class, and this is where things got really cool. We went to this place called the Shotgun Canyon down at Front Sight. Now, Front Sight is in the middle of the Nevada desert on a humongous plot of land, and it... Uh, it's pretty nice. It's a pretty awesome place. And at one point, there's a road that actually goes down into some canyons, some pretty cool little canyons. And they've set up targets amongst these canyons, you know, in this canyon area 
for you to sort of walk through. There are areas where you're blind, you can't see what's coming up, up next, and then you've got to get a little bit higher perspective in order to see something else. Um, very, very cool. Anyway, they took us through one student at a time. Uh, we did pretty much everything that we had learned, choosing what ready we would, we would uh, hold our shotgun in and have, having it fully loaded to start with, going down that canyon, and then when we saw a target that was too far away that we knew was a target, we would have to get our slugs ready to go. Now, they needed to double check and make sure, be absolutely safe about this, that we did not fire slugs at anything close up. So our instructors held the slugs for us in a box, and uh, we were required to ask for them when we wanted the slug. So I did my rack and roll, asked for the slug, got a slug in there, took my shot at a 35, 40 yard target or something like that, and uh, kind of went through repeatedly through this shotgun uh, canyon, uh, tactical reloading as I needed to, taking out targets that, um, that came into view as I was going down this little canyon. Very cool experience. I wish I could have done it twice. I asked if we could. We couldn't. But anyway, it was a very cool experience. Really enjoyed Shotgun Canyon. So it took quite a while to get the entire class down to Shotgun Canyon and through it and back to class. So there was a lot of downtime in between that where we had one or two instructors helping us do dry fire practice while the rest of the class was coming up. So we dry fired, did dry fire practice of everything that we had learned so far. You know, bring, coming up from the different readies, shooting at multiple targets, emergency reloads, transitioning to slugs, everything that we had practiced from that point, uh, we practiced during that dry fire session. Then once the entire class was back, guess what? We did all of that some more. We did all of the going to one knee, all of the uh, transitioning to slugs and firing from a distance. We did the... <laughs> We did all the multiple target stuff, we did all the port loading, we did just just everything, anything and everything we had been doing in the class up to this point, we did even more of it. And it was just a blast. And that pretty much lasted through the end of the day. Just going in between different things, again, front side is very structured on how they do things. You're not just up there on the line just doing whatever you feel like. They're calling things out, they've got not only your coach but the other trainers behind them watching for safety and making sure that everybody on the line is doing the same drill, the same practice at the same time. Uh, so, but we repeated that all day long, did those different things as they were called out through the end of the day. Man, by the end of it, it was just a blast. It was so much fun. Blast is kind of a funny word to use in regards to a shotgun class, but that's exactly what it was. At the end of the day, everybody left with a front sight two-day certificate and a lot less ammunition than we had before. <laughs> I brought down 100 rounds of target ammo, birdshot, 100 rounds of double-aught buckshot, and about, I think it was 25 rounds of slugs. And I think, I don't think I brought any of it back. Actually, no, I brought back, I think, maybe 7 or 8 slugs. That was it. Actually, I brought down 30 slugs, so that's why. But anyway, so all the rest of the ammunition was completely used up. It was just an awesome time. I highly recommend, if you're into shotguns, if you own a shotgun, and you're thinking about learning to use it a little better, take a shotgun course. Now, I'm not saying you have to go down to Front Sight. There are probably lots of other places where you can go. But Front Sight has an extremely well put together course. Uh, it's just an excellent school for pretty much any kind of firearms training. I highly recommend it. Well, I'm the late Boy Scout. Thanks very much for watching this two-part recap of my two-day shotgun course down at Front Sight. I had a blast taking that course. I hope you enjoyed hearing about it. And again, please subscribe, mash that subscribe button, watch for future videos where I'm going to go into some of the things I talked about in greater detail. I'm going to take them to the range and practice them and break different concepts out into individual videos more digestible, more interesting, funner to watch. I'm going to do a lot of that. I'm the Late Boy Scout. Thanks very much for watching. See you on the next one.